Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best and worst James Bond games. For this list, we'll be looking at 007's best and worst forays into gaming. Which classic James Bond movie should be adapted into a modern game? Let us know in the comments. Number 5 Worst, Tomorrow Never Dies. As the next console game after a certain influential game by Rare, Tomorrow Never Dies arrived on the scene with lofty expectations that it could never hope to meet. Even forgetting about its predecessor, however, the PlayStation game struggles to ever get out of first gear as it trudges along ten uneventful missions lacking any sort of depth. The gameplay does not encourage approaching scenarios in any other way besides shooting everything and hoping something hits. The third-person shooter does not control well enough to make up for its uninspired levels or frustrating inventory system. Number 5 Best – The World Is Not Enough There is no other console that 007 is more synonymous with than the Nintendo 64. While The World Is Not Enough cannot take any credit for Bond's legacy on the system, the Nintendo 64 version of the game is still an admirable early first-person shooter with varied missions, impressive visuals for the console, and solid mechanics for the time. Although not without flaws, the multiplayer is nothing more than serviceable and the enemy AI leaves a lot to be desired. The World Is Not Enough gets plenty of things right and delivers a thrilling adventure with a fair amount of replay value. Number 4 Worst – A View to a Kill – The Computer Game While Bond games came out at a steady rate throughout the 80s, most have been lost to time for a reason. A View to a Kill the Computer Game is an oddly ambitious title that tries to incorporate three different playstyles. It's a shame that none of them are particularly well executed. Whether slowly driving through the streets of Paris or scouring a mine to find the codes needed to stop a bomb, A View to a Kill manages to be consistently boring. Bond would star in some good games toward the end of the 80s, but this was certainly not one of them. Number 4 Best – James Bond 007 – Nightfire Globe-trotting, missile-stopping, and underwater driving is exactly the type of stuff that we expect from a James Bond adventure. Freed from a movie to adapt, Nightfire tells an archetypal 007 story that makes fun use of the franchise's penchant for outlandish scenarios and extravagant gadgets. Nothing can stop Operation Nightfire, not even my own death. That's a theory I mean to test. The single player is an enjoyable ride while it lasts, and it shakes things up just enough to keep things from growing stale. Although Nightfire plays like a bog-standard early 2000s FPS, the missions do leave room for some experimentation and stealth. Like the campaign, Nightfire's multiplayer was unspectacular, but still a good time. Number 3 Worst – Live and Let Die Remember that sequence involving a speedboat in 1973's Live and Let Die? Well, this 1988 game remembers. To its credit, Live and Let Die is at least unique among Bond games, mostly because it started as a boat-centric racing title that had nothing to do with the 007 brand. Split into four levels that last only around five minutes each but feel much longer, Live and Let Die is a monotonous racer with little to no diversity or excitement. 
Except for the speedboat spitting out bullets and sounding awful while doing it, there is nothing remotely Bond-worthy in this game. Number 3 Best James Bond 007, Agent Under Fire During the early to mid-2000s, 007 games became a reliable source for respectable B-grade shooters. Agent Under Fire does not attempt to set a new standard for gaming in any way, but not every release has to be revolutionary. The FPS tells a derivative but inoffensive original Bond story while putting together a solid compilation of shooting galleries, driving sequences, and set pieces. Bond moves makes for a cool feature that's sure to satisfy MI6-themed power fantasies. They were such a highlight, in fact, that they made a return in Nightfire. All in all, Agent Under Fire runs well and looks pretty good, especially on the GameCube. Number 2 Worst, 007 Racing On paper, a mission-based racing game highlighting 007's expansive collection of cars sounds amazing. In reality, 007 Racing is nothing but a disappointment. Once the initial excitement of driving the Aston Martin DB5 or the BMW Z3 subsides, all that is left is an awkward racer with bad graphics, frustrating controls, and an inconsistent frame rate. Double O Seven Racing is not without its occasional moments of adrenaline, but they are so few and far between that they end up making the game's lesser qualities stand out even more. Honestly, games like Nightfire and Everything or Nothing have far better driving sections than Double O Seven Racing. Sorry, Doctor, but your flight's been cancelled. Number two best: James Bond Double O Seven Everything or Nothing. Of all the James Bond games released over the years, none feel more like a summer blockbuster than Everything or Nothing. A third-person action game with a Hollywood cast and production values to match, EA's game blends gunplay, a cinematic presentation, fantastic driving sequences, and moments of unadulterated popcorn nonsense to create a pure Bond experience. Any game that has 007 getting into shootouts on the side of buildings must be doing something right. Even though the gameplay is not perfect, Everything or Nothing has more than enough variety to deliver a thoroughly enjoyable campaign. Agents, please hold your ground. Air evac is on the way. Number 1 Worst, 007 Legends A game so bad, Bond decided to retire for the better part of a decade. Playing out like a greatest hits collection of some of Bond's movie romps, 007 Legends throws Daniel Craig into the mix and then strips away any personality from these sequences. For a game so driven by nostalgia, 007 Legends shows very little interest in celebrating Bond's legacy opting to play like a generic first-person shooter with no finesse style or intelligence. While the film sought to take the franchise in a more mature direction, 007 Legends dumbed down the experience to such an extent that it lost Bond in the process. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1 Best GoldenEye 007 Really, is anyone surprised? A landmark release in console gaming history, Rare's GoldenEye 007 showed that a mouse and keyboard are not required to craft a brilliant first-person shooter. The robust single-player campaign highlights the game's impressive environments, deep gameplay, and clever mission structures that require some thought to complete. Yeah. 
As great as the story is, GoldenEye 007 is all about its frantic four-player multiplayer, a mode so fun that this experience alone was enough to warrant investing in a Nintendo 64 at the time. Every Bond game released after 1997 exists in the shadow of GoldenEye 007. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.